In this video, I'm going to summarize my experience from start to finish at the Jordan Peterson Beyond Order tour that I attended this week in San Jose, California. Make sure you watch to the end because I'm going to give some tips on how you can possibly find the best price tickets as well as share what I thought was the single greatest quote of the night. And believe me, it is a truth bomb if I ever heard one. Let's get started. So first of all, I mean, how cool is it that a psychologist slash professor can go on tour across the world and sell out auditoriums like a rock star? That alone makes my day. But what was the event like? Well, it started on a Wednesday night at 7.30. I show up, sit down, start chatting with this dude next to me who was into psychology, so super cool. Then they bring out this guy who plays guitar. He played some flamenco songs, right, just to loosen up the audience. And then they introduced Tammy Peterson. And in my mind, I'm like, who's, who's this Tammy? I've heard of Michaela. I think that's his daughter, but who's this Tammy person? Turns out it was his wife. And so she talked about their courtship, how they met, and just like this big history thing, right? She's a bit on the shy side, but hey, props to her for like getting up in front of thousands of people and, and doing her thing. I just kind of wish I had more time to talk to the dude sitting next to me because we were having a good conversation. Then there were a couple videos promoting these products he's got. One is like this Peterson Academy website that's still in the works, I think. And the other one is this product called Essay, which reminded me of sort of a Grammarly. It's like this thing that helps you write essays. Definitely a marketing team behind this guy. Then the man himself finally comes on stage, gives like a one hour lecture, starts it off with a pretty bold statement, which was this. I'm going to try to convey in about 45 minutes what used to take me 10 hours of lecture to convey when I was at Harvard University. So I'm like, okay, we're setting the bar high, but uh, hey, you're the man, so, so let's do it. And he starts by talking about Freud's iceberg model of the mind, the id, the ego, the superego, our instinctual urges battling against what we know to be socially appropriate. Gave me major flashbacks to Psych 101 back in undergrad. I would say the gist of the lecture was how religious narratives and archetypes form this substructure underneath the things that we experience in the world today. So what are these archetypes I'm talking about? Well, one of them is the archetype of the mother, and there's two aspects to that. There's the benevolent mother and the tyrannical mother. There's like a positive and a negative to it. There's also the archetype of the father, a benevolent father, and there's a tyrannical father. Benevolent father or maybe positive masculine energy might be getting things done. Whereas tyrannical father would be hyperaggression, and that's not good for society. So there's these polarities to each archetype. Then there's the individual, a positive and a minus. So now we have six, mother, father, individual. And he said there's a seventh called the dragon, um, possibly the dragon of chaos, but uh, he didn't go into that in detail. So we've got these archetypes, and he explained that every good movie or epic tale has at least one character in each of these categories. We may not realize it, but it does. So things like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, he said, they all have something from each one of these categories because this religious substructure represents our experience. It reminded me of some of the YouTube videos I've watched of his lectures on like Peter Pan, where he explains how Captain Hook is the symbol of the tyrannical father who is afraid of death and chased by the crocodile with the clock in its mouth and just this deep meaning behind the movies that we watch. And so what he said in this lecture is that these stories grip us because they have the religious substructure. And that's deep right there. I'll go to a lecture on that any day. I will say his vocabulary and his language were very high level. At one point he was mentioning the philosophies of Hobbes and Rousseau. And I'm sitting there thinking, bro, some people are going to know who these people are, but some people are not going to know who Hobbes and Rousseau are or what the philosophies are. You can't just mention them in passing and then just brush over it, right? But anyways, it's all good. So then we went on to Q&A. And my recommendation here is think of a question before you go to the event of what you want to ask. Because what happened to me, this particular venue was super strict on cell phones. So they were like, no recording, no photos. We will kick you out if you take a photo. I'm like, damn, I'm just turning my phone off and putting it in my pocket, I'm not touching. So I sit down and then I see this big television screen that says, submit a question by scanning this QR code or by going to the website. Well, I didn't want to pull out my phone, so I'm like, eh. So I don't know how many questions in total were submitted, but only four of them were read. And here's what they were. 
And by the way, Jordan's wife, Tammy, is the one that read the questions. I assume she chose the order of them, but I have no idea. So she pulls out her phone and reads the first question. Three years ago, I almost took my own life jumping off a bridge and at the last minute decided not to. What advice do you have for people in a situation like that? Pure silence. You could hear a pin drop. All I'm thinking is that's going to be the first question you start with. Come on now. But Jordan did knock this one out of the park. The answer he gave was actually a quote from another professor he once had who said, suicide, you can always do it tomorrow. And so while that answer is kind of tongue in cheek, I would say it's also quite efficacious. And then Jordan shared a bunch of success stories from his years of doing therapy. And I really think a lot of the people from that audience are going to enter therapy very soon for the first time in their lives, which is a great thing. I always support people getting help and working on themselves. The next question was about Andrew Tate and hypermasculinity. And that question got a rise out of the audience. And Jordan kind of stayed away from the question. He just said he didn't know enough about the topic to comment on it. What I will say regarding patriarchy, and I know this is not completely related to the Andrew Tate question, but Jordan did comment on patriarchy throughout the lecture, saying that it's not all bad. The takeaway there, I think, is the non-black and white thinking. What I like to say is reality is diversity. Any event that happens, there's good and bad. Any ideology, there's probably good and bad to it. And this also speaks to the dichotomous nature of those archetypes I was talking about. The archetype of the father having a positive and negative pull to it. Same with the mother and the same with the individual. The next question was, how would you raise your kids differently if you had to raise them in today's day and age versus, say, 20 or 30 years ago? I think Jordan kind of misinterpreted the question a little bit because he answered it as if it was asking, what did you do wrong in raising your own kids? And it's not, not quite the same question. And last, somebody asked, do you have any tips for talking to women? And of course, the crowd had a bit of a laugh at that question. And then Jordan paused, he thought, and then he said this. You don't talk to women, you listen to them. As you would guess, the crowd roars in laughter and applause. But then he gave what I would consider a lot of top-level psychology insight here, pulling from evolutionary psychology. He said that the reason it's important to listen to women is that they are a little bit higher in negative emotion than men are. And so they're attuned to potential problems, potential threats in the environment. And the reason being is that if they're protecting, taking care of the baby, it's advantageous for them to be hyper aware of possible threats. Of course, one byproduct of this is that they might detect threats that aren't really there. And those are called false positives. And he spoke about the sensitivity of an instrument. So women might occasionally have this imprecise, cloudy, amorphous, sort of ooh, just vague feeling of something's not right. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to say it, but something doesn't feel right. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just part of, I think, uh, evolutionary inheritance. For more information on stuff like this, I would recommend the works of David Buss, evolutionary psychologist. And then all of a sudden, Jordan just stood up and he said, thank you all for coming. And he walked off the stage. And that was it. Started at 730. I walked out at 10 o'clock. So it was about two and a half hours. I sat in the balcony next to the stage and I got my ticket from StubHub for $54. Now I bought my ticket four days prior to the event. And what I noticed was in those next couple days leading up to the event, people probably realized that they had bought tickets and can't go and they listed those tickets at a low price. So like two days before the event, there were floor seats right in front of the stage going for the same price that I had paid for the balcony seat. It's a little risky using that strategy though because worst case scenario is you miss out and don't get any tickets. And the moment we've all been waiting for, my favorite quote of the evening. Drum roll, please. Jordan put his hand out just like a philosopher and said, and I think the reason we call it Mother Nature, at least in a Darwinian sense, is that nature is that which selects. Women select who they are going to mate with, and nature selects who is going to survive. With all these references to evolutionary psychology, I just had a great night. If you went to the tour, put in the comments what your experience was like. And if this video is helpful to you, give it a thumbs up. Think deeply and put your existence first.